So, so one of the things that I have noticed that, that April did in our family was that, and I think there was a transition. So I'm really curious, April, how you would describe, you know, how this happened, but, but you began to really intentionally turn the hearts of our kids towards me. So this is what I wrote. I said, wives can turn the hearts of their kids toward or away from their father in a thousand subtle ways. My wife continually turns my kids' hearts towards me and much of my influence in their lives is thanks to her. So I, this, is, this is something that felt like, like developed in our, in our dynamic within our home that you really led and championed and I thought got more and more committed to over time. And now it's like, you know, next level. So we can talk about that, but I'd love to get all of the, all, all the mothers kind of feedback or thoughts about, about this. It seems like a very small and subtle area, but I think it's, I think it's incredibly influential, very powerful. So April, talk, talk to us a little bit about yeah, how that happened uh, in, in your heart and, and why you started doing that. Yeah, I think it started, I actually picked up on this from my parents. My mom was really good at turning the hearts of my dad, the heart of my dad toward us at least. And I think she, my parents became new believe became believers after they got married and then started having kids pretty much right after that. And so they were like new believers as they were learning how to parent. And so I think as my mom was learning things from the Bible, she was trying to encourage my dad, like, oh, look, this is maybe how this would apply to the kids or apply here at home. And then he would be like, oh, but a lot of times as a kid, I, did, I thought it was my dad's idea, you know, and then as a, I think maybe year eight, nine, 10 of our marriage, I would pick up on these conversations with my mom and she'd be like, well, actually, I mean, I kind of told dad that he should try to do that. I'm like, you did that family club thing we did. That was your idea. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, I totally thought it was dad's. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, and then I started being like, well, what about this? And what about this? And she was like, I mean, not to brag, but yeah, that was kind of like my idea. And so, and it made me, I, I came upon this verse in Jeremy, is it in Micah or Malachi? I always forget the Elijah, spirit of Elijah. Oh yeah. Malachi. Malachi, where it says that the spirit of Elijah will come in the end days and that the last days, and that he will turn the hearts of the children towards their father and the hearts of the father towards their children. And my dad was obsessed with Elijah and we didn't have this language back then, but I think my dad really carried the spirit of Elijah with him and was proactively turning his heart towards us children. And I began to see my, how I was like in certain ways, like preventing that either standing in between Jeremy and my kids and the, our kids, or I would even like, if he was late in response, like they would ask him a question and he's off in space, not answering, I would answer for, for him. Or if like he was doing something that I didn't like, I would question him in front of the kids. And then I realized that one of my daughters was taking up my offense and being like, yeah, dad, why are you acting that way? And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is not helpful. And so really remembering what my mom had said about like, oh, it's actually kind of my job to help both parties here, I think. So I would um, really build up with the kids like whenever daddy was coming home, what, it's time for daddy to come home or, oh yeah, when dad gets home, you should show him that. Or they're just constantly reminding them that dad's coming and that he would like, he would love to see that picture that you drew. He would love to see those flowers that you picked. He would love to hear about that crazy basket you just made in the basketball hoop. Like remember to tell him that when he gets home. So I was always saying that kind of stuff to them. And then I remember a lot of it happening with Jeremy happening around the dinner table. So he would not to throw you under the bus. Go for it. But <laughs> Maybe he'd be a little like, you know, out, like thinking about something else. And then there's whatever is happening at the table. And there's me very in tune to what's happening at the table. And so I could do, I could continue to do what I've been doing all day long with breakfast and lunch and throughout the day, like sit down, stop blowing bubbles in your milk, use your fork. Like I could keep doing this or I could turn to Jeremy and say, so Jeremy, I have a question or dad, I have a question. 
Do you think it's a good idea for kids to sit down on their bottoms when we're at the table? I mean, I'm just curious what you think. And then Jeremy's like, whoa, whoa. Okay, here I am. <laughs> I'm sitting at this table <laughs> and I'm getting a cue from my wife that I need to pay attention to something. And so I had to kind of like turn his heart towards them and say like, look, they need, or like, Jeremy, did you notice that Elisa, she just showed you a picture that she drew. Did you, did you like see it? Did you like <laughs> tell her it was pretty or cute or like, did you acknowledge it? And so we did that enough times. I think that he, I still have to kind of prod him a little bit here and there, but I think that over time, enough of those, like, and then I could say behind closed doors, like, hey, this one really needs a verbal affirmation. Like, you really need to say more to this one. She needs to hear your words saying this thing. And then, you know, to the kids, I just was always kind of like keeping da dad at the forefront of their mind. Dad would love that. Oh, you should tell him. Almost like this thing didn't really happen until we had tell dad about it. Or let's text out a picture of that thing we just did. That's so funny. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It, I've definitely experienced that. Like, it is difficult. Like, oftentimes I am distracted. And April has been so helpful, you know, when when that's happening to to notice. And, you know, I, I there I think I at first was very annoyed by that. Like, no, let me be in my own world. I want to keep my head in the clouds. I was thinking about something that was really important. I'm sure it's more important than whatever what my kid needed, you know, and you know, I, I, over time I started to realize, and I think part of it is just, you, you do it in a very honoring way. It's, you don't nag and it, you know, you, you remind, but you watch me and it's, it's a dance that you've been really careful with how to do this in a way that, that works really well for us. And I've, now I'm like, I just welcome it. It's been so important because I don't want to miss those moments. I don't want I want my kids to, to really understand how much I love them. And I don't want to, yeah. Uh, this and this is, I think, the thing that really what, what destroys this uh, this team dynamic we're talking about right now is the sense of competition we were talking about earlier. If you're, if I, I think that some women, you know, if they, if you start to resent your husband or get frustrated with him, and you can make an ally out of your children in the resentment you're feeling towards your husband, and this can be very subtle, but you're like, see, it just proves the point. It proves what you know how clueless he is. And so I've seen this dynamic in a lot of homes, and this is sometimes where you even see like the females in the house sort of uh, all feeling each other's frustrations with, with the, with the father or with all the guys in the house. And it, there's this horrible sort of gender tension starts to em emerge in the, in the family. Yes. So, and I think the wife is so, sort of like, there's a, there's a role the wife can play in all of that to make it all about cooperation and collaboration. And I think the husband has to, you know, has to enter into that, you know, allow, allow her to play that role by actually listening and responding to to what's happening there but i it's just amazing how much power in a good way i think mothers have to to do this to create this dynamic